probably record. Haven't notified me yet, but we'll see. It'll be a nice, fun start to the video whenever this gets uploaded. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, looks like we uh, there's a couple of people that are registered for the course that aren't uh, haven't joined us yet. Uh, maybe they they will shortly, or maybe they're just you know auditing. I don't know. Uh, so welcome to uh, whether you're in the uh, master's level. 5092 uh, scientific research methods and ethics or the 7092 advanced version of that uh, for the for the doctoral program. Um, that's where you should be. That's where you should be expecting to be. Uh, so my name is uh, Joseph Lede. Some of you guys know me uh, already uh, through other courses or through uh, other ways. And uh, so I'm excited about uh, teaching this course. This will be the OK, uh, this will be uh, first time I've taught this course here. Uh, first time actually I've taught uh, this course uh, at all. So um, yeah, so you know, I, I've uploaded a syllabus and I'm going to run through. I made some slides for that. I uploaded those as well. I'm going to run through those. Um, hopefully not not too long here doing that. Um, so let me go ahead and do a share the screen thing. They must have updated Microsoft Teams since yesterday because this is very is a different feel to it today. OK, all right. So uh, for some of you who have had me uh, in courses before, you know, I I, I like to uh, do this whole quote of the day thing. I, I you know, I, I didn't do it a lot last semester. I just kept forgetting. I think I just was out of my element uh, with um, with uh, everything being online. So I would love it if this uh, if we could go back to face to face very soon, uh, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen uh, as quickly as we had hoped. So uh, the quote of today today comes from Nietzsche or Nietzsche. Or I, I'm I've heard his name pronounced so many different times, so many different ways, uh, and uh, he tells us that he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. And the reason why I put this quote out there is one is an, it's an it's, you know second half of this title is ethics right and so i really uh, i want to be able to focus on the ethics of of scientific research and of engineering in general uh and because there's a part of me that thinks you know if, if we understand the why of what we do if we understand the why of why do we do research of what is important about research uh, then a lot of the other methodology kind of comes out of that, right? Uh, and so um, I want uh, that to be the foundation, the, the why to be the foundation, the what is it that we are trying to accomplish being, whether it be, uh, you know, professors who do research or, or teach or engineers who work in industry, you know, whatever it is that, that your goals are, whatever it is your dreams are that, um, the why is the the foundation, right, of what uh, what we do. All right, so just some basic information. Where are we here now? Officially, the um, course objectives are listed on the OBS system. This is from from the OBS system um, basic of how to do scientific research and how to do data collection and. Uh, you know, understanding the ethical standards. There are some ethical standards we'll talk about. Uh, I've uploaded into, if you've looked uh, in the documents, the class materials folder, I've uploaded some documents there. Uh, one of them is the uh, National um, Society of Engineers, the uh, the Code of Ethics for them. Um, you know, go ahead and take a look at that. It, it, we are going to, we'll discuss that at some point this semester, um, maybe even soon. Um, so, uh, but just want to make sure that uh, uh, you guys know that there is a class materials folder where uh, where I will be putting documents. I'll be putting the lecture slides there. Uh, other readings that I would like you to take a look at will be there as well. All right. Um, there is a textbook for this course. I will be kind of referring to it uh, pretty frequently. Um, I. Don't I'm not requiring you to go out and buy this textbook. 
but uh, this is kind of where the slides, the basis of the slides will come from, is from the material in, in this text. If you're here, it means you already know how to get to this, uh, this group here. Uh, you should be in the five, since both groups, the 7092 and the 5092, are going to be meeting together. Uh, I'm go ahead and I went ahead and put everyone into the 5092 group. That's the single location. That's the one location where the announcements will be made. The um, the materials will be there. The meetings will be there. Uh, so um, you sh I mean, if you're here on this meeting, then you're in that group. So we're good. Uh, as far as the other group is concerned, if there's anything that's specific to the 7092 group, the doctoral group, I'll, I'll put something there for you guys. I I don't foresee anything being there, but, you know, it's as we've learned in this past year, you can't make plans because they always get changed, right? OK. All right. Uh, grading. This is my plan for grading. This is tentative. Uh, discussion contribution. I want this to be a discussion based class. I'm not just going to sit here and talk the whole time. I really want uh, you guys to uh, contribute to the course discussion, especially you know when we when we talk about the ethics side of this. Um, my plan is to have kind of a 50 50 type of thing where what we're going to do is we'll spend one hour, so the class spans across three hours, but uh, being in the online format, I know that that goes a lot, it actually goes a lot faster than that. We get done with things a lot faster than normal. So as of right now, my plan is to have like about an hour, maybe an hour, maybe a little bit longer than an hour discussion on the uh, the methodology of research topic, the method methodology of research side of things, and then have another hour or maybe a little bit longer discussion on some ethical issue. Um, and so that's my plan. I think there's enough material in both of those that uh, that we can fill up an hour pretty quick every week, fill up an, an hour pretty easily. Um, and so that's uh, that's my plan. And I will want you to give a lot of input because I want to hear what you have to say. I don't want this to just be uh, me telling you everything I think. Okay. There will be some assignments and there will be an overall paper presentation project type thing. Uh, the paper and presentation will represent your final exam grade. That's what we're going. That's what I'm going to do as far as the OBS system is concerned. And there will be some individual assignments along the way. OK. Attendance, you know, make sure you come and contribute to the discussion. Uh, I want to see everyone here. I want to see all your faces and hear your voices stuff. So I know it's online, so it's not as nice, but uh, but you definitely uh, I would like you to come and make sure that uh, you can contribute. Uh, there will be some homework assignments. Like I said, this is the details of, of my my plan. Uh, basically, don't don't submit late, you know. Uh, if it's on time, you get whatever the points are that you, that you've earned, and if uh, if not, then there will be a, a late penalty. And uh, anything after two days, I just we just won't accept it at all. Uh, so, uh, academic integrity as far as you know, cheating. Don't cheat. Don't plagiarize during like on your paper. You know, if you have a source that you are citing, you know, if you're quoting, uh, make sure you cite that source. Um, and actually, not today, but this is actually one of the things I want to discuss in terms of ethics is because this is an ethical thing. This is a question of ethics. And so uh, I want to have us discuss this and, and, and think about well, what do we think about this academic integrity? Because this is a rule that pretty much exists at, my, at all universities, right, and all academic institutions, and in you know journals and publications. Um, and yet, it, it is a question of ethics mm -hmm. as well. So we'll talk about that. I'll I'll, I'll explain uh, later. All right. So this is kind of the planned outline. Now the topics here, uh, the tentative topics. Uh, those are all kind of the research methodology and how to do scientific research side of things. So if you'd look at this as being the 
the what we'll probably try to cover in about an hour each each week um, would be what we'll be doing there. Uh, and then there will also, like I said, be also some ethical question that uh, we will discuss as a group as well. OK. All right. Um, one final a couple of final notes here. If you need to contact me, uh, you can you can use the uh, the Microsoft Teams or you can use my email address. But note what you're talking about, like this with uh, the subject line CSE 5092 or CSE 7092, uh, and then some brief description of what it is that you're writing about. Uh, I get lots of emails from students that uh, you know the have no subject line at all, have no subject at all, and then I've got to go track down. Okay, what class is this re referring to? What is? I mean, I've got. I'm teaching multiple classes. I'm also advising students. That we've got the you know the senior uh, design uh, projects that are that the senior students are working on. So I have lots of students that I interact with. Um, I don't know everyone in the class yet, and so you know if you email me and you say, hey, when is assignment two due? And you don't have a subject line, then I've got to go track down. Okay, which class is this student in? What 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 is assignment to? So just go ahead and make a note when you contact uh, Joseph Hoja. Uh, go ahead and put that CSE five zero nine two or CSE seven zero nine two in the subject line, uh, and then tell me a little bit about uh, what it is that you're talking about. OK, I have a policy. I try to respond within 24 hours of a business day. Uh, so what that means is that if you were to email me right now at 145 with a question, I will do everything within my power to respond no later than 145 tomorrow. Um, now that's a biz that's business day. So if you email me on a Friday. It might not be till Monday that I'm able to get back to you. Um, and so uh, is basically what I'm trying to encourage you to do is if you need to get an answer to, to a question, contact me sooner rather than later. OK, all right. Uh, questions about grading. I don't think anybody in this class is going to have a whole lot of questions about grading. I, I don't imagine uh, you guys will have a hard time uh, doing well in this class. But if there is any kind of question about grading, make sure you contact me in a reasonable amount of time. I've had as of yesterday, I had students that were emailing me regarding some of the grading of an assignment or some other activity from last semester. And it, um, it's like, can't really do anything about it now. So make sure you contact me uh, soon enough that I can do something about it uh, if there is a, if something needs to be done. All right. I say keep up with the course. Don't try to get. Don't try to wait until you know a couple weeks left in the course and then suddenly throw together the paper and the uh, the presentation. Uh, try to incrementally do it. Do it along the way. Okay. All right. Uh, when in doubt, ask. Uh, what I tell people a lot of times is there's nothing wrong with not knowing something, uh, but the problem is, is if you don't know something and you need to know it and you refuse to ask for help, that's a problem. So um, yeah, make sure that if you uh, if you are in doubt about something or you're not certain about something and you want to know, seek out the answer. Try to try to uh, try to get help from someone who might be able to help you. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's kind of the introduction and syllabus slides. Uh, let's see. OK, so let's see, what was I say? Oh, and again, so this is supposed to be a discussion based uh, course. So I would like everyone to make sure to, you know, discuss things. Uh, let's see, and again, the part of the other reason that I've kind of decided to make this a little bit more heavy on the ethics side is uh, probably more so than those of you who have taken this course before. Uh, many of you in this class, you've already done a fair amount of research as it is. You've already done a lot of the define the problem. You've already done a lot of the searching for uh, existing articles and, and other types of um, um, 
like Google Scholar and library type research and stuff. Uh, so the so to me, like a lot of you guys already have that that tool, but I don't know how much uh, in the past this course has done much on the ethics side of things. And so I would like to try to incorporate that much more. Um, and also just a little bit about me, I have a history of uh, industry work. I, before I went back to university to finish my PhD, I spent uh, uh, about 10 years in the industry, actually doing software development, software testing and software development. And um, ethics was something that I really was found important because uh, of how often, if it wasn't practiced well, uh, how that really negatively impacted uh, the ability of software to be developed well. And so, uh, yeah, so that's why I wanted to incorporate that more so. All right. So being in the first week and being that we're all just, we're kind of getting used to things and everything, I'm not really going to do an in-depth discussion uh, on uh, the research methodology side of this. There is a there is a set of slides of research methodology introduction that we may do next week, uh, but go ahead and look at those. But I would like us to kind of have, I, did, I have a, another set of slides, this intro ethics slide that I would like to discuss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this. Uh, not that. Okay, this is a fairly standard problem in ethics. It's a very standard uh, question in ethics. Okay. Uh, uh, before I get into this, a question that I wanted to ask. So I'm assuming that uh, many of you are uh, Turkish, your nationality and your uh, what we might call an ethnicity is Turkish. Uh, but I know some of you are not. So what types of uh, nationalities and ethnicities do we have represented? So if you're not Turkish, why don't you tell uh, tell us where you're from? Like me, I'm American, for example, in case you didn't know. Okay. So Seth is American. Is it? Ah, Kyrgyzstan. Okay, good. Anywhere else? Is that it? Just, just America and Kyrgyzstan. I'm, I'm, a, and I'm. If I say a name or a country name wrong, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm I work hard on trying to get these things right, but I am. Can mess up. No, nope. is that it? Okay, well, all right. Well, the reason why I, the reason why I ask is because um, a lot of times our uh, national origin, our ethnicity, uh, your family can can impact how you uh, interpret the world, how you interpret you know, good and bad, right and wrong, and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, you know, And so sometimes we get stuck into, we kind of think that ethics is this uh, very solid thing, that there is only one way to view things. Um, but as we're going to see, as, we, as uh, we're going to see in this set of slides that was uh, actually a use these as a set of slides that a friend of mine who actually uh, he does counseling. Uh, he's a he's a professor in counseling in America and he sent me these. Uh, and so kind of interesting that the way we view the world can very much impact the what we understand of good and bad. 
Okay, and that's what I'm getting at. So, for example, this is a very common uh, ethical question that gets asked for in ethics and morality classrooms and stuff. So, it's known as the Heinz dilemma. And so you have a you have a man. His name's Heinz, and his wife Wanda has been diagnosed with a rare disease, which is thought to be incurable. So she's 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 going to die basically. But a certain pharmacist or druggist in town has just invented a cure for the disease. You know, Bob has demonstrated that the cure works perfectly so Wanda could be saved. But because of government bureaucracy, the drug has not yet been approved for use and is therefore not covered by Heinz insurance policy. And, and we know all about this, right? The government bureaucracy of approving drugs. We've seen that with this uh, most recent pandemic with the approval of the vaccine that as soon as Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson and, and some of the other uh some of the other places, uh, China, Russia, and some other places, as soon as they developed a vaccine, it wasn't necessarily widely available because uh, the government in America, it's the uh, Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, hadn't yet approved it. All right. So it wasn't widely available because they hadn't approved that it could be used. All right. So, so it hasn't been approved and it's not covered by his insurance. Bob, the, the pharmacist, the, the guy who developed the drug, is willing to sell the cure, but is charging two million dollars, and it cost him twenty thousand to develop the drug. So he's trying to make some money, right? He's, it cost him money to make the drug, so he's going to try to make uh, a profit off of it. Um, if Heinz goes out and borrows all the money he can from families, friends, gets a loan from the bank, wherever, and sells his house and his car, he'll only be able to get together half the money that he needs, one million dollars, and. Heinz decides to break into Bob's house or his office or you know whatever and steal the drug so that his wife can have it. All right. So what do you think about this story? I think I would do the same. You think he would do the same? Yes. Um, I think I I will um, engage social network. I will express myself to the entire world and uh, like uh, to help greatly. Like I believe it would. It would. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were breaking up a little bit. Your audio was breaking up a little bit, so I didn't catch all of that. Uh, it may be my internet, by the way, so it may not be your your side mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, can can you say that again? You would you would engage a, in a social network? Is that what you said? Uh, yes, I will uh, engage social networks. Um, I will express myself to the whole world um, of the issue, so that the world helps me. Like mm -hmm. uh, the world will uh, hear my wo voice and. Um, like today, it's a powerful tool, so it may change something. Yeah. So you're saying like make social media posts and maybe even uh, well, what's it called? The not uh, Seth there said Kickstarter, but there's another one called Oh GoFundMe. Uh, you guys seen that one? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, there's no like. There's no like. This isn't multiple choice. This isn't like A, B, C, D. Like you have to choose the right answer. There's, there's, like Seth points out, there's three accountable entities. They've all made decisions on, like the government, you know, uh, in trying to make sure that only drugs that have been perfectly tested or, or not perfectly on tested well enough get approved you know, has slowed the process to be able to approve this drug, right? Um, Heinz, it's, uh, Heinz is an accountable entity in this as well. And Bob is even, because, you know, if he costs him $20,000, you know, why is he charging that much more to make it? You know, but that's his choice, right? He, he can choose how much he wants to charge it, uh, we would think, right? Um, so there is no, there's no like one right answer. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. But it, but how we think 
right? So, Professor, well, actually, Bob's trying to demonstrate uh, the drug perfectly, but how can we know that whether he's telling us a lie or not? You know, because uh, he's uh, trying to sell its his products, you know, mm -hmm. and probably he might uh, have be, have told told some lies to Heinz, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, right? We how do we know for sure that this drug that Bob wants to charge so much money for? How do we know for sure that it will uh, that it will work? Yeah, and Seth brings up that, you know, Bob might be risking prison time, uh, but the question is, okay, is he willing to risk prison time if it means that he might be able to save his wife's life, right? So there's there's this question, um, you know, what happens there, right? Anyone else? I think in this question, there are multiple variables because, you know, when we think about the freedom, uh, Bob has every freedom to sell or not to sell his drug he just found it. But when we think, think about it humanly, we think that Bob should sell this drug much cheaper than it actually is. So in order to do that, we have two options. We either force Bob to sell his drug uh, cheaper by using government force, or we can use uh, common sense to force Bob to sell his drug cheaper. Either way, there isn't an ideal solution, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why... Uh... Millie, you bring up a good point is no ideal solution. This is why oftentimes we refer to these as uh, dilemmas, uh, right? Is because uh, for many of us, uh, for many people, we think the way that we view the world is that there's one way to view it. Like, so someone might say, oh, well, it's wrong to steal, right? Somebody might say, oh, it's wrong to steal. You should never steal, All right? But here, you might also say, oh, but you need to do whatever you can to protect your your family. You need to protect your wife. You need to protect your children. Well, but what happens when those two, those two beliefs, you know, it's wrong to steal and you need to protect your wife and family. What happens when those two come at odds to each other? They come up against each other and you have to choose one, right? Um, you know, is there, uh, you know, is there a right answer in that situation? All right. Uh, so Burak suggests, can we force the government to uh, approve the drug sooner? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You guys have, uh, have you guys have much luck in Turkey forcing the government to do things faster? Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't noticed that that happens in America. Okay, I won't make you guys answer that question because we're we're recording. So, uh, so, but this is this is the type of thing that so this is the type of thing we'll kind of talk through. Uh, I'd like to talk through like why not one question like this and maybe uh, one principle of ethics, you know, every week if possible. And just kind of talk through, okay, well, how does that work? And and if you look through, nah, okay, <laughs> make an offer to buy. Have you been watching? Uh, what is it? The uh, The Godfather. What up, John? Have you watched The Godfather? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's what it that reminds me of. Make an offer. He can't refuse. Uh, so. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that I would like to be able to do is just kind of talk through uh, an ethical question or a principle of ethics, uh, you know, just kind of get, get your input. And uh, because, again, I have a very specific uh, background. I was I was 
raised in a state in America. I was raised in Louisiana in America. And my family, my nation of origin, all of these things have impacted uh, lots of other things as well. The schools that I went to, the friends that I had, th those things all impact my understanding of the world. Right? And you, all 20 of you, you know, have all had different experiences in life that have impacted your understanding of the world. And so I'd like us to be able to you know, talk through these things so that we can understand um, how the rest of other people think. Right. So, all right. So one other thing that they did that was included in this set of slides that a friend of mine that my friend gave me, well, when he put he put pictures with the names just to you know kind of personalize it. Uh, but so these this down here at the bottom, this this uh, eight different terms down here at the bottom are, are eight different kind of discussed and and understood ways of viewing the world and and we kind of could go through and just uh, some of those words are long and, and, and hard to figure out but basically the idea is it kind of like you lead to a specific view of the world based on some questions that you might answer so um do you think good and evil are absolute objective realities? Is there a good and an evil that that's always you know, absolute objective? In other words, it's not dependent on my own personal thoughts, but there is some good and evil out there that's that's outside outside of what I think or outside of what society thinks, that kind of thing. And if if you answer, you can either answer no or yes to that question. All right. So if you answer no, all right, then the question is, okay, who determines their meaning? All right. Who determines their meaning for particular times and places? Because say, for example, uh, one topic that often gets brought up with American history is the idea of slavery. All right. That at one point in American history, slavery was considered okay and there was no problem with it. At this current point in American history, we don't think that slavery is okay. So if we if we say that there is no absolute good and evil, then we must be saying, okay, well, who determined that it was okay then, and who determines that it's okay, not okay now, right? Um, and so if we say, well, society determines that, then that would fall into this cultural relativism. If you ever heard the news, or and this is all topics that, like, if you ever read an article or uh, read a news report that included a term like this. This is what it means. This is what that philosophy would mean. Okay. If an individual person determines the particular uh, right and wrong, or, or sorry, good and evil for particular times and places, then that would be you know, subjectivist ethics. So you have two forms of good and evil are not absolute, they're just whatever society or the individual feels like would be cultural relativism or subjectivist ethics. Okay. All right. So who determines if you say on the other side, if you say, okay, you know, there is an absolute good and evil. Like, the, the, you know what? It doesn't matter that America used to have slavery. Like it was wrong then and they were, and they just didn't know it. Right. If, if you believe that, then uh, who determines that? Like who determines what is good and evil is is how do we determine that? Um, well, if you have if you have some idea that this there's a all powerful sometime some type of all powerful uh, being, then that we would call that the divine command theory. And that's there's all types of you know we're not going to get into religious talks about you know which god or who got you, but just if you believe there's some out there all powerful being that. Um, that determines good and evil, that would be, you would fall into this divine command theory uh, box. All right. If you say, oh, we worked it out by reason, we figured it out. Okay. Um, it's kind of like if you think about it, like from a science perspective, uh, the science, you know, the nature of how the universe is put together, the nature of how atoms and quarks and all, you know, and how stars. Uh, how planets uh, revolve around stars and all that. That's always been that way, but we're just now understanding it. We're just now realizing it. 
um, then that would be, you know, we worked it out by reason. Like that would be as far as ethics is concerned. That would be, it's always been that way. We're just figuring it out now. And we've reasoned it out. We've, we've used logic and reason to figure these things out. Okay. Okay, so then how, how does one define good? Good is whatever leads to happiness. All right. Well, or good means that you are logically consistent with the universe. Okay, so those are two possible definitions of what good is. All right. And if you are in the logically consistent with the universe, that's Kant, uh, Immanuel Kant uh, proposed this type of philosophy. Uh, or good is human flourishing. And you'll see why these two don't kind of lead together. Uh, why these two, the happiness and flourishing, one's going to lead to the other. Okay, but good is human flourishing. Good is, you know, people are uh, more productive. People have more access to resources than they did before, that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so if we think about whose happiness for good is whatever leads to happiness, okay, just more general happiness in the universe. All right, just, just more overall happiness for everybody. Okay, not everybody individually, but just general. Okay, then that could be a utilitarian view. If the important part is my happiness, my own personal happiness, then we would call that the the the, the label that they've given to that is objectivism. Uh, whose happiness? If we're saying, oh, you know, good is human flourishing, not not general, some general out there happiness in the universe, but human flourishing and and again, people having more access to resources and stuff like that. You know, who gets a say in what counts as flourishing? Um, men mostly meaning the historical view that you know in a lot of um societies men are in charge and, and that kind of thing then that would be aristotle will give us that and then if women you know, thing the feminist virtue ethic so if you've seen these terms out there in the news you know then this is kind of what defines it. it's it when you look at the chart like this very confusing, right? Um, but basically what it boils down to is kind of this question of, um, you know, how do we determine good and evil? And, and again, as you can see, there's all these different ways to determine that. And even within those categories, there's, you know, there's even fine, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, find divisions as well like where you know even if you and someone else might be kind of in that same in the same box and with the same label it doesn't necessarily mean that you see everything the same way all right okay all right but as i said for me i think that if we kind of have a good understanding of you know some of these concepts of um of what we believe about good and evil, about what we believe about right and wrong, and, and uh, some of these other terms that come out there, uh, then the ethics will come out of that. And then also our commitment to doing research properly will come out of that as well. All right, so what do you guys think? Are you guys, uh, what, what, you have questions, comments beyond what we've, just kind of this little intro here. Professor, uh, can I say something about this uh, topic? Sure. I mean, I mean, the uh, uh, evil and good thing, you know. I mean, I mean according to me, uh, evil people uh, can be seen uh, as good sometimes. Sometimes they might introduce themselves uh, uh, as a good uh, to us as a good people, but uh, they can uh, stab us behind our back, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to think uh, very deep the to uh, realize the difference between evil and good, you know. I mm -hmm. think like that. Yeah. Yeah, because. Uh... 
like one thing that I think that kind of what you're getting at is, you know, someone may think of themselves as a you know good person, but may do bad things, right? I think good and bad can be modeled. You know, we can put if we have infinite time, and in this infinite time, we can model every possible action and every possible reaction in order to create a mathematical model that decides what what should be the outcome of it. Therefore, I think uh, good and bad are kind of mathematical if we consider the good of the human being. Yeah. So, Meli, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think is good and what do you think is bad then? Because you, you say it's a mathematical, but, but how do we determine what good and bad is? Sir, but you can't always calculate the consequences every uh, thing. Mm -hmm. I think good and bad is kind of dependent of, as you said, the cultural, uh, cultural, cult cultural, excuse me, cultural stigma. Mm -hmm. But that stigma actually can be universal if we consider, you know, uh, killing is worse than stealing something. Then we can create a deciding machine uh, which can separate this. Uh, actions so it can pick the optimal outcome. Of course, some people might may suffer, but by good and bad, what I meant is uh, getting the optimal outcome a uh, given action. Mm -hmm. Right, because one thing that you uh, reminded me of right there, Meli, was uh, so like one thing I read uh, a couple of years ago was talking about trying to implement self-driving cars like the all this the the work that's been being done recently in self-driving cars and how one of the things that is going to have to be included in that is giving the car how to mathematically calculate uh you know desired outcomes basically is what they were saying and and so for example uh, well, one of the questions that we will uh, talk about that comes up in ethics and philosophy a lot is what's called the trolley problem. And the, and the idea is uh, what should a car do if if it takes – if it comes across, say, an animal in the road, right? Well, should it swerve around it? But what if swerving around it may cause some other problem? And, and it needs to calculate which problem, you know, hitting the animal or hitting something else – you know, which of those is mathematically worse, right? Which one of those is, or should I say, which one of those is mathematically better and therefore the desired outcome? Uh, because if it can, with perfection, choose the route, you know, if it can perf with perfection either hit the animal or hit whatever else is in the road, you swerve and hit whatever else is in the road, then it has to make a decision which one of those is better, right? Which all comes back to for us which comes back to this whole idea of what how do we define what better is you know because this whole good and evil you know that good and bad these are all terms that are as seth here talks about the underlying emotion right there's an there's emotion in a lot of that um where we have to define okay which which one of these two things is more good right um and so that's the kinds of things that you know, we as we're modeling these things as we're creating these autonomous vehicles self-driving cars uh artificial intelligence and some of those types of things that all ethics comes into play it's not just it's not just can we make a car do something that a human has always done done it for it. it it's more um, can we also make it understand that certain outcomes are better than others. Mm -hmm. So I like you. I like you guys are giving some good input. I want to. I want to just sit here and talk forever. I just want to sit here and talk with you guys. Okay. Right. So 
again, because it's the first week and and we're all still kind of getting settled into uh, this whole class you know, type structure and stuff, I, I do hope that in the future that all of you will give some input because I think that every single one of you has something to offer uh, to this discussion. Um, and I hope you're not doing it just for the 10% points of the class, right? But that you really do want to engage in the discussion of how to, for me, like, I tell, I tell a lot of my first year students, I take a lot of pride in the, in having the title of engineer. Um, you know, that those of us who have achieved that, you know, we've worked hard to get where we are and. Uh, and that's and that's a good title to have. But I also think it comes with, uh, you know, uh, Murad John, you uh, you quoted The Godfather. I'm going to quote uh, Spider-Man, right, that, you know, with uh, great power comes great responsibility. Right. And that I think that we as engineers um, and as designers in a, in a lot of ways, we're the designers of the future. And so uh, I tell people a lot of times that. Uh, you know, politicians had certain amount of power, but really the guy who the, designed this thing, you know, the smartphone, the first person who kind of thought of that has probably impacted the world a lot more than any politician ever has. Um, and so, but don't tell any politicians I said that. Um, but uh, so for me, if we're going to design the future, if we're going to uh, make the future happen, then we need to take uh, a lot of responsibility because, yeah, the guy who developed a smartphone sure impacted the world, but so did, you know, a guy named um, uh, Einstein who helped develop the first atomic bomb as well. So, uh, so those, both of those have impacted the world uh, in a lot of ways. All right. Uh, so, a couple of uh, things that I'll tell you. Too, and then if there's not any other comments, although I'd love it if there are, because we can just sit here and talk. Uh, but I did upload in the documents folder uh, under class materials. There's a documents folder. Uh, there's a few papers there that I thought were some interesting reading uh, about cross-cultural and especially cross-cultural work and how it impacts software development. Uh, so they're kind of old. They're a couple of 20-year-old papers, but <clears throat> but still. I think are uh, are very useful for for those. Good. So take a look at those. There may be uh, an assignment involving those papers. So go ahead and, and take a look at those. Uh, there's also a document that is the the National Society of Professional Engineers Code of Ethics. Uh, so uh, we will discuss that um, and what our thoughts are on that document here in the coming weeks as part of this class. So I would I would like you to go ahead and take a look. That's that's an Amer when it says National Society of Professional Engineers, that's the American National Society. Um, I'm don't know. I should look it up. I was gonna say I don't know if Turkey has a, a code of ethics like that, but um, I should look it up. Maybe one of you knows if there is. So all right, well, is there any uh, comments or questions? Any more kind of contributions for today? I don't think so. I think if you just, I think it, the way it's gone today, if you, uh, and, um, I don't know how to pronounce your name, by the way, and I'm sorry uh, for that. Uh, but the way it's gone today is pretty much as people have opened up their mic, uh, turned on their microphone and started talking. So I think that that'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, so I Salkin or Al Sakin. Is it is it I with a dot or without a dot? Okay. So I Salkin. Okay. Thank you very much. Hmm. 
Yep. Yep. All right. Well, if there's no other uh, comments, then we'll go ahead. I know. I know this is very short meeting today. Uh, next week won't be the same. We'll we'll meet for like I said, two hours. The plan will be an hour worth of <clears throat> specifically talking about uh, research, uh, specifically talking about research methodology, and then an hour or so uh, talking more about in general ethics um, and and ethics and how it impacts and how it impacts uh, our work. Okay. If that needs to be changed throughout the semester, if they're need, if, it, if it's clear that um, if it's clear that we are not getting enough done on one of those two t sides, one of those two topics, then I'll tweak uh, I'll tweak the the time frame of each class. Uh, but for now, I think that uh, both of those will have plenty for us to talk about within an hour, uh, within our, our time frame. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I look forward to uh, seeing you next week at the same time. And uh, other than that, have a good weekend. See you all. Thank you, sir. See you. See you, Professor. It's been a great talk to you. Uh, thank you, Mehmet. Nice to see you again. <laughs>